Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores Ooh. brings you Garage Logic Podcast That's number 1295, oh. April 25th, 2024. It was 91 degrees on this day in 1962. I think that's two days in a row for 62. And 25 degrees on this day in 1907. There is no threat of an imminent swimming occasion, but you know it's just around the corner. So if you have a lake home or a swimming pond, get a hold of the people who make the products of Aquaside. They're made in White Bear Lake. They've been keeping weeds and swimming areas free of weeds and algae for more than 60 years with products that are easy to use and work quickly and Register with the EPA and DNR. There's no need to let weeds overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside. Tell them what you're staring at, and they'll get you the right products. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. And Aquaside, of course, brings us the ice outs. Minnetonka went out on this day in 1888, 1904. In 1962, we're kind of nearing the end. White Bear Lake went out in 1940, 1962, and 1972. In general, or are we nearing the end in ice outs? Ice outs. Got it. Okay. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner. Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. I would like to spend a moment on bicycles. You want to go ride a bike or to Eco Fun Motorsports? Are they coming up today? I yes, so. they are. Yes, they, yes, they are. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm at peace with the whole deal. Uh, the bicyclists continue to win, and that's fine with me. Uh, I have other problems. But St. Paul just passed yesterday uh, legislation in the city council to expand uh, St. Paul's uh, bicycle access by 163 miles. Oh, wow. <laughs> Additional <laughs> paths and protected areas and raised curbs and it's 163 miles of protected bike lanes and that'll be over the next 15 years and it ostensibly will be paid for by sales tax in the city and they want to get more people biking and get people out of cars okay it's not going to happen the reason i bring this up is that it was it was in the pioneer press the other day and it, uh, quite a few people got a chortle out of it. A guy told me he chortled when love, he saw it. Chortled. The representative for Ward, this led me to a new theory. My theories are worthless, You're but just, I have another new one. You got a new one every day. <laughs> uh, the fellow who was chortling said, did you read the bike plan story in the paper this morning? This would have been Tuesday. And I said, no, because I've made my peace with this. I don't care what they do. I can't do anything about it. We're, uh, we're governed by people who really, really think this is the way to go, even though we have no biking season here to speak of. So what he wanted me to point out is that Chinica, Chiniqua Johnson represents Ward 7. Ward 7 is a, a great swath of the east side. Battle Creek, Dayton's Bluff, Conway, Eastview, on and on and mm -hmm. on. And Chiniqua... Uh, won the seat that Jane Prince vacated. Jane Prince was the last sane woman. <laughs> By sane, I mean ideologically sane. She was a committed leftist, but had an open mind. She, she. There was some wiggle room. She knew what was going on. Okay. All right. But she had enough, apparently, and she's done. And Chaniqua Johnson represented her. And she was quoted in the Pioneer Press as saying, I uh, contacted all my constituents about this 163-mile bike plan. And she said, I got three responses, exactly three. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay, okay. So I got curious. 
About 5,000 people voted in Ward 7 out of multiple thousands of people. So, A, there's a bit of apathy there, right? And she won uh, not by a landslide at all over uh, her opponent, whose name escapes me, another woman, a Hmong woman. And I got to thinking, okay, lady, you got three responses on your which I'm sure was a very uh, positive mailing about where do you, I said, won't this be great if we get, okay, three. What that should alert a normal human being to, uh, but did not alert Shaniqua to, is that they're not capable of seeing I mean the St. Paul City Council, but this would be true the closer you get to the country's tallest buildings. They're not capable of seeing, embracing, or understanding that the things they want are the least of people's problems. In other words, if you live on the east side, it, it's to me it stands to reason that 163 additional miles of biking pavement is the least of your concerns. Mm-hmm. The Padre least. Vang. Padre Vang. Yes. But Kenny. isn't that what they want, Joe? That means they can shove this down your throat with no debate. Right. I'm getting to the point, uh, however weak it is, that I'm trying to make. It doesn't occur to the likes of Chiniqua, who's a lifelong St. Paulite, might be a great woman. I don't know anything about her. But it doesn't occur to her ilk that... That lands on the kitchen table of a typical citizen on the east side. That's the least of their problems. But they're going to go ahead with it anyway because to the activists on the city council, that's what they know. Mm -hmm. They know it's important for them to get you out of a car and onto a bicycle. They don't know what stress there might be on a family to buy shoes for the kids to go to school. How about public safety? How about uh, just the list is endless of what people could be worried about before they ever allow themselves to have a five minutes of quietude in their life where they where everything is so settled. Everything is so taken care of that they think, you know, 163 additional miles of bike pavement would be pretty cool. (laughs) <laughs> they're, they're, they're a world away from that A yeah. world away from that So then I went further and I looked up Shaniqua okay. And uh, comes from a f- Mom and dad and they were Raised on the east side and But she never and she's had A dozen jobs Not one of them outside government She's worked for Allison. She's worked for Hillary. She's been an aide to this. She's been a member of this community action group. Good for her. I'm I'm not indicting her for that. What I'm suggesting is she has never, maybe except with the exception of growing up, she has never been exposed in her working life to what might really be of concern to the recipient of her mailing about bike pass. She's been protected, coddled, and embraced by a public class all her life. Same with the mayor of St. Paul. He's never done anything except be in the public. Right. They, so, they can't identify with what is happening under the roof of a normal constituent. They aren't worried about bike pass. They're all activists. What do activists bring to the table? Activism. What does the activism involve? It, it involves ephem- ephemeral things. It involves existential things. It involves things that have nothing to do with getting through your daily life, getting to work, working, public safety, getting kids to school, having having enough food on the table, uh, fixing a hole in the roof. The backyard fence just went down. Somebody just burglarized my garage and knocked holes in the in the garage door windows. Call precision. They they they. This is not their world. Hmm. 
This is just not their world. And if you gave them the hardware store test, I bet they'd all flunk it. Have you been to a hardware store in the last six months? Three times over the weekend, I was standing at my deck. I went to Fratelloni's three times in I've one day. I've had to do that often. But it's then, awesome. <laughs> so that I'm done with bicycles. We're going to get a new 163 miles of bike pavement in St. Paul. I'm, I'm, I think that was inevitable. Uh, switch that to the people opposed to turning Summit Avenue into part of a regional bike trail. The activists on the council have no concern for the history of Summit Avenue because it was basically founded by wealthy white lumbermen and railroad barons. They have no concern for that, and they have no concern for the people who live there now and have real-life concerns, property taxes, hole in the roof, whatever. They None. Parking their car, where are you going to park your car? And ironically, the property taxes they pay are way more than the pet taxes that the people on the council pay. Oh, way absolutely. more. Way more. Absolutely. So there you have it. Uh, I'm, that was just my little speech on bikes today. Uh, I, I don't know where to take this, except we, we, the citizens of the cities closest to the country's call us buildings, this is the fault of voters. This is exactly the fault of voters who are neither concerned about producing candidates who understand life or don't care or are simply outnumbered by the people who stand to benefit from the election of activists. Or all of the above. And of remember, above. you're in one of those categories because you clearly stated you don't care anymore. So you've given up. Ooh. No, I... That's a gotcha. Uh, I'm, well, I'm to the point... I'm to the point where, yes, I don't care because I, there's... Uh, I, but you vote and it's I'm, not going to stop that, you from voting. No, I'll vote, but I've never won. Right. Never had a victory in St. Paul. So um, I feel the same way you do, but for different reasons. I, I don't live there anymore and don't care. Uh, but last time I was there, we went down the street where I used to live, and we got to 42nd Street only to discover that there's now a curb in the middle of the street, so you can't take a left. You can only go right, westbound. Guess what Kenny did in his three-quarter ton giant pickup truck? <laughs> right over the curb. <laughs> right over the curb. <laughs> Kenny does what he wants. <laughs> the, the roommate got a kick out of that, actually, and did not uh, yell at me. <laughs> you know, the street lights are out. Uh, car thefts are up. Uh Crime is rampant. Light rail, it, the, and the public transportation they want to push you on is not safe more often than not. Uh, well, anyway, we've we've done those shows, and I'm sure it'll all come up again. But, and I I don't even I don't even have I don't have an ounce of anger that the city council approved 163 miles of new protected bike lanes. I, I am I not liking this defeated Joe. It's, I, it's I, not I, that. With with bicycles, I've given up. We, they've been sold a bill of goods about this. It's a ridiculous state to bet on bicycles. It doesn't work half the year, uh, and and yet it just has been pushed and pushed and pushed, and God knows how many people have been hired uh, and have jobs now on bicycle coalitions and, and things of that nature. But I further looked up, or further, I tried to contact Chiniqua. Did. I didn't try. I emailed her okay. and said, uh, Chiniqua, uh, Joe Souchere from the Pioneer Press and Garage Logic, uh, would you please call me at your convenience? And I left her my number. And, and I went the email route because, A, no number was provided. Uh, on her official uh, website stuff. And B, uh, apparently uh, we're, people are responding to emails, I guess, these days more often than they respond to telephone calls. Well, sure enough, I got I got a response. You did? Well, I'm gonna oh, automatic? No, no. Oh, I'm going okay. to read, read you the response. From one of the interns? I hope I didn't delete it. Damn it. Whoops. Oh... Well, if it's an email, you can retrieve it. If it's a oh, text. it's an email. Yeah, not a text. It's an email. Okay. Let me go to email. I, I don't think I would have deleted that. Probably here it is, right you here. You got it right there. All right. 
Oh, that's mine. Shanika, would you please call me about the bicycle pass? Thank you. Then I gave her my name and number. All right. Patrick um, Racy, Star Tribune. Let me, uh, no, it's right underneath the one above it. It is? Yep. No, it isn't. Wow. Uh, here it is. Let's, uh-huh. let's go here. Yep. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. These oh, are all Joe. sent ones. That was me. I'd sent a fake one. Oh, Joe. Just, just a minute. Kenny, what are you doing tonight? Hey, you okay, need some more ice chips it. in your water? I got it. I apologize. I don't Shaw. like all of this. Stuff. Here we go. Mm, you come Hi, Stop. Joe. Council member Johnson had a council meeting today. Well, I emailed yesterday at 4 o'clock. Yeah. Council member Johnson had a council meeting today. The city's bike plan passed unanimously. You are more than welcome. Welcomed. To send over your thoughts with Councilmember Johnson at Ward 7 at St. Paul, as that is her official email address, the public written comment closed. However, Councilmember Johnson is happy to connect you to Jimmy Shoemaker, who is the city of St. Paul's staff person overseeing this. You can also find out information here, St. Paul Bicycle Plan. Thank you, signed Team Chaniqua. Yeah, so team. Know, somebody's named Team. She's got a lot of her pals are probably on her staff and getting paid, which is fine. I can't do anything about that either. But that's, I don't want to do, I just wanted to say, here, my only question for her is, does it occur to you that maybe it's the least of your constituents' problems that you got three responses? That was my only question to her. I love how they have her protected so well. Team Chaniqua. I don't even know who she is. And well, she's got she she layers of protection. She's a St. Paul. She's been around, but she you're not going to find her working at Ace Hardware. Got it. You know, a frat might fall. or entering hire. But frat will. He sorry. might hire. Frat <laughs> might. He's pretty know. desperate. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Okay, there's your bike pan. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I got to take a time out, don't I? You got to calm <laughs> down, bro. Well, I, I'm I'm not I'm not upset. Are you Zen? Are you Zen? Uh, what is Zen? <laughs> I don't know. You know what I need? Some runoff. Oh, you're saying, man. Oh, yeah. Huh? Getting close to the weekend, grilling. They, I'm going to follow um, up what they got here. Right I, know, I, I know I already told you about me standing my deck this weekend. Yeah. I now have moved the Fratelloni's smoker this morning right. out to the deck. All right. I think I'm in for a run. Run, run? Well, there's three stores, the flagship in Hugo. Well, they're all in the northeast, so which one do I got to go to Just north closest? of Hugo on Highway 61, okay. Forest Lake, just east of 97. I'm sorry, just east of 35 <clears throat> on 97. And the southernmost. And the southernmost okay. stores in White Bear Lake on Highway 96 in Birch Lake Square. But all three stores have the same delicious variety of brats and steaks and chicken and salmon and you name it. On their Instagram, what are they, what are they featuring they right now? Jalapeno cheddar beef sticks. Oh. But they also, banana cream pie brat. Not Banana for me, cream pie. But Say it must what? be for some. <laughs> Spencer's, yes. you know what Spencer is? A mad scientist. Yes, for the dog, dog bones, smoked dog bones, and smoked trachea. I'm not worried about dogs. What I'm worried up, about dog? I'm worried yeah, about feeding up, people dog? with Grunhofer's meat, well, which is man's best friend too. More than a hundred flavors of brats. What's your favorite steak to grill? I filet. Mm. Well, you can get the fillets. The New York Strip is, you, I haven't perfected that yet, but the fillet I have perfected. Well, you can follow Ron Hoffers on Facebook and Instagram for weekly BOGO brat specials. Mm-hmm. Buy one, get one. It's a great way to try the new flavors, which keep popping up all the time. Uh, Spencer's throwing me with banana cream pie brat. Yeah, I know. Holy mackerel. He's got That's dessert meats. in the meal in the same bun. Yeah, yeah. And the rookie burgers do not disappoint. I got to no, perfect very good. that. Here we go. Yes, sir. That's amazing. Perfection. <laughs> it's Grunhofer's Old Fashioned Meats in Hugo, Forest Lake, and White Bear. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give 
give you a free pick to use on your first Cash Pick'em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GARAGELOGIC to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18+, plus, 19+, plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19+, plus in Colorado for some games, 21+, plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times, and that's why you need the best, and also somebody that you can trust, and that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts, and he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48-minute, no-obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608. 952-925-5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success, and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952-925-5608. And tell him you heard about him here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Suchere. Uh Instead of chastising you for not getting in there sooner, I'm just going to say you've got a few hours left here. The big sale at Maple Grove Lock and Safe. It's actually the tax refund sale going on right now on a wide variety of Liberty Safes. 10, 12, 15% off a whole bunch of different units. You can save up to a $700 with this incredible in-store discount and matching mail-in rebate deal. Uh, it ends the 29th. That's Monday. That's Monday. So you got some time left. Let's be optimistic here. You can make it. Um, go to the website. If you haven't been there yet, it's brand new, maplegrovelockandsafe.com. Get acquainted with Rich and all the skills he has uh, related to locks and security measures, including safes, the best safe ever made, of course, the Liberty Safes. They're made right here in the U of U.S. of A. Uh, by Americans using American material. Um, and in addition to this sale, there's always a sale going on at Maple Grove Lock and Safe. And in addition, always, if you're a GLer and you tell Rich you're a GLer, you're going to get 15% off on all small, quick combo and key vaults. Uh, Maple Grove Lock and Safe, there they are, 6901 East Fish Lake Road in Maple Grove. And that website, you can't forget it. It's easy. MapleGroveLockandSafe.com. You could say that the Cathedral of St. Paul is going to be bulldozed to create a bicycle staging area, and people in St. Paul wouldn't care. <laughs> I, I truly agree with that statement. Scientific American claims it is misinformation that there are just two sexes. Hmm. Okay. That's Scientific American has published seem... a piece claiming that misinformation such as the notion that there are only two sexes, is being used against transgender people and in order to target gender-affirming medical care. Let me stop right there because I'm confused by the term gender-affirming medical care. If your stomach hurts and you go to the doctor, does it make a difference that you have a transgender stomach? Huh? In other no, words... You, you know, you go to the doctor and you say, my stomach hurts. Well, what does he care if you're trans? You're going to, what does he or she care? I, obviously, they're going to say, okay, let's take a look. What right. difference does it make? Right. It doesn't I, make a difference. I, I think gender affirming care refers to, we're going to help you switch sexes. That's that's just a code word for, yeah, we'll, we'll give you the drugs. And that's why I asked the question. Cut I think off you're the right. parts. The article states that there are three types of misinformation and they are oversimplifying scientific knowledge, fabricating and misrepresenting research, and promoting false equivalences. The piece asserts that many of the arguments against trans rights center on the idea that transness itself is not legitimate, that there are just two sexes, period. Uh, it then turns to scientist Simone Sun. 
S-U-N, a self-described transsexual androgyne neurobiologist, pronouns in bio person, and notes, you describe this idea as sex essentialism. Can you explain that term and talk about how it shapes the debate? They, she, hmm. they, she then states... Essentialism is the idea that you can take any phenomenon that is complex and distill it down to a particular set of traits. In the case of sex essentialism, the idea is that you can sufficiently describe sex by a few particular characteristics. In this debate, it used to be chromosomes. Now it's gametes, egg and sperm cells. I'm already lost. Which are one's you, your favorite? Uh, Sam, are you lost? <laughs> I'm yes. lost at androgyna. No, androgene. Oh. Uh, are they talking about a disorder here, an intersex disorder? Or are they just talking about fantasy land? I have no idea. Whatever you're into. Right. They, she said the target is always moving because if you want to make something binary, then you need to find the most binary characteristic. Today's sex essentialism <laughs> boils all of sex down to the gay meats that a person produces. Hey now. When they're just swaying back and forth. But biology is just not that simple, Sun continues. Adding the sex essentialist perspective is completely wrong about the biology of how sex characteristics arise. The piece goes on in this vein, throws in hate and prejudice and climate change and Donald Trump. All to push, <laughs> all to push the ideological agenda that life-altering drugs and surgeries, well, Kenny, you were right, should not be challenged. That's right. life-affirming or right. gender-affirming. Right. Uh, men can't be lesbians and gay kids don't need to be... Oh, I'm reading from some of the comments. That's okay. Yes, that happens. Me being heterosexual and straight and being vocal in my identity as a straight woman was huge. All right. Hmm. Declarative sentence. That lady has a funny sounding voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hanging on to that one. So XY, boy, XX, girl. Forget it. A wiggle, okay. wiggle, 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 wiggle. That doesn't make any difference anymore? No. No, not according to Sun Kissed or whatever the name is. Sun Kissed. Yeah. Sun -kissed. Like grape or orange. <laughs> right. Grape. We're 30 minutes in. It seems like your dauber is down. Are you okay today, Joe? Oh, no, I'm, I'm trying to find things that. I that, know what it is. Topic. I know what it is. No, I know what it is. Nope, I know what it is. You are really deep right now. You don't know where they're going to go. You are worried about the Vikings quarterback situation on <laughs> NFL draft day. I have not given the draft one moment of thought. Uh, um, well, let's break this down before we go any further. You shot him draft? yesterday. Um, I'm thinking you had a pretty bad round, huh? You going to give Ooh. it up? Finally going to throw those clubs no, off the forward no, bridge? No, I, my new foot is going to result in one. Really? Oh, yeah. My new foot. So you it's know. not that. I got a new foot. I Did drove. the 48 hour <laughs> rule um, beat you down no, no, in the last 24? No. No. I drove by and saw him on the mm. first tee, and I yelled out the window, Hit it into the water, you! <laughs> and I looked, <laughs> What the hell was that? Did he stay? <laughs> I didn't finish it out loud. Though. That really, that really happened. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. <laughs> I timed it perfectly. I thought, what the uh, hell? I turned. It was this. How did he get here with his orange slices? Did you, uh, <laughs> did you pay on the three p prices you pay? What happened, Joe? Oh, everything. Fill us in. Everything Let us in, Joe. Everything We're your is friends. great, except the world is falling apart. Yeah. Well, that's every day, though. <laughs> Electric vehicles. You like them? Call me now. Not. Um, I'm going to tell you something about electric, and I don't care what you say in return. Not so much into the electric vehicles. My next chainsaw is going to be an electric chainsaw. What? Yes, absolutely. I have I one. With a battery or with a cord? I have no, one. No, battery. I, I need have one. Yeah, I need one I, for the tractor and for the truck. I, They're absolutely it awesome. It will be strong enough. No, it's yeah, the well, lousiest yeah. piece I, of equipment no, I've ever owned. No, 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 not steel. I, yeah, I disagree. I just bought a battery-powered one that works great. Okay, then maybe I bought 
uh, too gentle of a model. Would you buy like a Black & Decker or something? It's something that uh, it, it, it just chews up what you're trying to cut. It doesn't cut mm, it. Well, it just that's chews because it. your chain is dull. No, dummy. it's brand new. It's brand new. Uh, I'm putting Tri-State Bobcat on notice right now. Bob, boys, save me one of those mini steel saws. I'll be picking it up shortly. Why don't you just pour some seafoam on the blade? It's, it's, the, it's brand new, out of the box. You yeah. went, you would go to a limb, <laughs> a very foam. modest limb, huh. as a test to cut it, and all it did is chew it. It didn't is, cut it. Is, is, the foam chain on, on? is the chain Matt, on backwards? Matt, I'm going to tell you for the last time, you yeah. dense word I can't say. <laughs> oh. This thing is brand new, out of the box. It got dull in what, the box. What you're describing is the chain on backwards. Ooh. No, yeah, I'm or did not. You, yeah, did you, you forget? Well, then the, it was shipped to me with the chain on backwards. Grandpa, you're using the wrong side of the knife. <laughs> you, you usually have to put the chain on yourself, didn't you? Put I the didn't chain have on? to put the chain on. <laughs> you know, I helped. Did you order this from Acme? <laughs> was there a picture of a coyote yeah. on the box? Exactly. I had helped I, the kid with the chain on his bike, and I made sure I'd put it on the right way. The but I need deal? a good no. chainsaw. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, I'll have to go to, uh, where do you go? Uh, well, I'm buying mine at the Tri-State Bobcat. Yeah, I'll go to Tri-State Bobcat. And I'll be glad to go electric. That's fine with me if it actually cuts off tree apart. Yeah. It's electric. Uh, my, uh, my tiny one is so cold-blooded. It takes 10 minutes to warm up. I'm done with it. I'm going to throw it in the crick. Crick. <laughs> there he goes. You know what? You, you should not even be allowed to own a chainsaw. And I hope you don't. Uh, I have... You don't have one. I have any, I think I have an electric one that you plug in. Because you're not to be trusted with something like sure that. It's a baby one, though. It's That's a, a head trimmer. <laughs> oh, That's a head trimmer. I have a head trimmer, trimmer. I'm sorry. It doesn't yeah. have a chain. It just goes... He, g- g- he g- cut g- the cord. That's, That's a not head, a chainsaw. It's a, yeah, it's, a chain. it's a head trimmer. I've worked with the product. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, Kenny. It's a head trimmer. Sorry. You know, uh, I lost my uh, drive. If you get the urge, Matthew, to go outside and get some stuff done in the backyard, just don't. Just stay in the house. I usually <laughs> see what's just, on TV. I usually end up just hopping in the hammock and just yeah, saying, you know what? Good, that's perfect. That's uh, good. Yeah. When I came back from Florida, Gabe informed me that he cleaned the Blackstone grill to his liking. He didn't like the way I cleaned it. So I thought that was... Chris, Thanks, do you have kid. the uh, audio of the young women yesterday uh, protesting at New York Uni- I don't want it yet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to set it up. But I want but, it now. But I want to hear it again. They were protesting but really didn't know why. Correct. They I traveled got an, from Columbia to NYU. I got a, uh, an email from John Nelson who found a hole in my no-flunk theory. Remember my theory yesterday? Yes. Mr. Mayor, I have an anecdote that may poke a hole in your using the no-flunk theory, no flunk theory to explain the increased intensity of anti-Israel protests on college campuses. Of the nine students arrested on April 23rd in, for involvement in the pro-Palestinian encampment at the U of M was a high school classmate of, classmate of mine. We remain connected on social media, where I have witnessed her evolution from a conscientious, high-achieving high school student to an ideologically driven campus activist. In high school, she took advanced placement courses, was an accomplished musician, and was involved in other extracurricular activities. I share this to make the following point. This is not the case of a student who has taken no-flunk courses in the soft sciences or humanities. On the contrary, this is a student who has undertaken the most rigorous of academic pursuits, yet still has acquired a loathing for the West and all it stands for. Also on social media, I have seen other past classmates from similarly rigorous academic backgrounds rush to put proclaim that the former University of Minnesota campees and the uh, campers are on the right side of history. While it would be easy to blame the issue on the fields of study that are clearly motivated by woke ideology, here I mean the gender and colonial studies type degrees that are in fact impossible to flunk, the problem is more complex than that. These are students who have known a great deal of what the West has to offer. 
They have excelled in the demand science and technology at the university level. They have been so familiar with some of the greatest achievements in Western music that they could perform them in front of audiences from memory. And many have been part of the American immigrant story, yet they still reject the West and the system of values that has been its foundation. I have been trying to identify what motivates this hatred of a civilization that has offered them so much. No explanation so far seems satisfactory other than that the oppressed versus the oppressor narrative is an ideology of extraordinary power, and it seems to have seized an almost parasitic grasp over the minds of many in the failed academy. Thanks for the shows you've been putting together lately. From my GL outpost, outpost, fresh out of a school in the failed academy that has not failed entirely. John. Now, before you play that, I want to read one more along these lines. Uh, Jerry writes, more proof the left can't link. Muslims slam planes into our buildings, and we are told by the left, not all Muslims are bad. Okay. The state of Israel attacks Palestinians after their people were attacked. The left now says all Jews are bad. Even the Jewish people who maybe have never stepped foot in Israel. Just a thought. Well, that is true. We are being told, especially by these kids on campus, some of whom actually know what they're protesting, that it's Jews that must be eliminated. They should not have their own state. But we're always supposed to bend a knee to the oppressed and realize, of course, well, all Palestinians aren't bad, which is probably true. Now, here are some kids in New York yesterday. And what would you say is the main goal with tonight's uh, protest? I think the goal is just showing our support for Palestine and demanding that NYU stops. I honestly don't know okay. all of what NYU's doing. Is there something that NYU's doing? I really don't oh. know. I'm pretty sure they're... Do you know what NYU's doing? About what? About Israel. Why what? are we protesting here? Uh, yeah. Palestine will be free! I wish I was more educated. I'm not either. Oh. I She turns, lots of what? She, there's lots of cops. What? cops. Oh, she cops. turns to her friend because she's clearly confused as to why they're there in the first place. Right. To say, why are we here? And the friend says, I wish I was more educated. Right. This is clearly hey this is clearly people who are being told and being given what their marching orders are. Mm-hmm. Well who, who bought the tents? After yesterday? After yesterday. Yeah. These kids are so stupid. How stupid are they? How stupid they are they? are so stupid. This is all driven by social media, and these are these are marching orders, guys. I I have I have never been more convinced of that. Where are the but marching orders not, coming from? They're not. Mar- are they marching orders in terms of are they brainwashed? Are they being controlled? This they, is the are, cool thing to do for social media right now. Yeah, they're going on their own free will. But you're you, you're right. But it's a whole new, different kind of brainwashing yes. that we've ever seen before. Yes. And I think it, a lot of it started with um, the riots in Minneapolis a few years ago. Yep. I think we saw how quickly started. that turned. I, yeah. I, I, it was instantly. Yeah, but I want to know about the tents. <laughs> um, they're all blue and white, and they're all expensive. Okay. Well, it's all those Palestinian organizations that I brought up yesterday. I did all that research. And that's where they're coming yeah. from. Yeah, there's also a uh, an editorial in the uh, Wall Street Journal today, Joe. I don't know if you saw it. Some anti-Israeli protesters are paid, and it's about groups who are actually paying protesters at the colleges uh, x amount of dollars. Basically, it's like a job. Yep, uh, I, come out, that come makes out. sense. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Who in the stipends. Back? You have a question about the tents. I want to know where they come. Who, who, the tents. I, I know who this email came from. I spoke to him this morning. All right. Mr. Mayor, when Minneapolis was clearing encampments, which would show up just days later in the same place or somewhere else, I had the same curious curiosity as you. Where did they get the tents if they were homeless with no funds? Then one day I ran across a social media site at Supply Depot MPLS. Their mission is facilitating the collection and distribution of basic survival supplies for our unhoused neighbors in Minneapolis and St. Paul. 
They are a, don't be surprised, nonprofit uh, tax deductible donation site to provide tents and other supplies for encampments. I know you keep asking the question, where are the kids getting the tents? But deep down, you know the answer. Some organization or nonprofit is seizing the opportunity, likely with taxpayer nonprofit dollars, to provide the means for the students and more likely now professional agitators to have these tents. This is shaping up like the free speech protests at Berkeley in the 1960s, where most of the students protesting were not actually students. Okay, now take it one step farther. Well, name me the outfit again that has this. At Supply Depot MPLS. Well, Google Supply Depot MPLS. Is there a physical storefront where a homeless person or a protester can walk in and get a tent? Um, they don't. They don't have vans driving around town okay, to on. see who needs a tent. Right. It's, it's not a storefront. It's 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 an organization. Most of this is done online. Oh, so the homeless have computers that they just sit on a vacant tree yeah. stump and put in their order. I have it right here. A lot of them have phones. Hold on. Donate today. Click the link. Yeah. Supply your credit card. You can get one hundred dollars equals camping supplies for two. Fifty to dollars. Donation is a sturdy tent, $25 a Stop sleeping bag. Stop and start thinking clearly. Yes, sir. You're not answering my question. How does that... I send them some money, yep. and they ostensibly use it to buy tents. Well, let's click How on the How are the link. tents getting to the kids on the U of M campus? I'm going to click on the link. Uh, what would you like to contribute? Their budget right no, now... No, you're, you're still no, missing I, the point. I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to walk let you them, through this process. Let them, let them click through. Let them follow the click. So let's say let's say this money goes directly to this organization. They then in turn make the purchase at name your big box retailer. I don't want to indict anybody in specific. Right. They go into Walmart and they buy, you know, they buy them out of two man tents. They or, just happen to be blue. Exactly. And, and then, then they go over to Fleet Farm and they buy them out. Or they find a target, supplier. Whoever. Right. They exactly. find a supplier and they and they make a big order. So their estimated annual budget mm -hmm. is one hundred and fifty eight thousand five hundred and thirty one. Okay, so what do they then do with the tents? Then they're either picked up by a volunteer or they're delivered by the organization, depending on how it works. Why? Are, why do you wonder about that? I'm not trying to fight you here. Why? I'm just trying to complete the picture for myself. Okay. All right. All right. That's fine. The Supply Depot. This is from Facebook. There, uh, I can't get on their regular uh, page, but the Supply Depot continues to be entirely volunteer managed and run. Yeah. A core collective of about a dozen volunteers handle most of the day to day administrative tasks and recurring events such as pop ups and Friday drop in hours. So maybe somebody. So they have a physical place. Yeah, we continue to work with a network of volunteers who pack, pick up, and distribute supply orders across MSP in Minneapolis, St. Paul, as well as a group of propane volunteers who refill the propane tanks throughout the winter to keep our neighbors warm. Okay. So they drive down there with their Subaru Outbacks and Foresters, and they load up the back, and they haul them to wherever they're needed. Well, you could make the argument they're people with a good heart. All right. Donate today. Yeah, uh, yeah, tax deductible yeah. donations Fine. are bad. Uh, we don't know. Well, no, no. They, they think they have a good heart. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, each week we distribute twenty-five to thirty tents, thirty to forty sleeping bags, one hundred hygiene kits, fifty pairs of grunders, and more than seventy-five neighbors visit our free clothes closet weekly. Okay. Thank you. Yes, you. I was just going to say none of this is surprising. If this is a tax. To buckle donation. Thank you. Um, these people are donating to this cause, thinking they're doing, as Kenny mentioned, they think their heart's in the right place. They don't realize where their dollar is actually ending up. Well, not to put too fine a line on it, but there's a difference between a group like this uh, raising funds to provide seriously homeless poor people with a tent and these phonies at Columbia, all right. of whom had Correct. tents. And the answer to that and all of those questions are held in this Wall Street Journal opinion piece that John brought up. I mean, the sub headline here uh, is Rockefeller and Soros grants are subsidized, subsidizing 
those who disrupt college campuses. And I've just been kind of scrolling through it, and everything's laid out here in this editorial. It's really fascinating. I will. Uh, I apologize that I did not read that. I will read it the moment I get back to my uh, ranch in Wyoming yeah. and read that <clears throat> editorial, which is still in the house. Soros's Open Society Foundation has put 730 it's that thousand into education for just peace in the Middle East since 2018, most recently with a two year grant in 2022. Peace in the Middle East, though, cannot mean the eradication of a Jewish state. That can't be peace. What? It, it's, well, it, it's interesting. I think you brought it up before Chris played that sound bite. How. The oppressed are trying to turn themselves into the oppressor, or maybe better said, it's oppressors fighting oppressors. Yeah. In, in this case, I don't know. You know, Reavers, who had the assignment yesterday of, of going through the U of M campus and trying to determine about tents, I think uh -huh. we've gone a long way in now understanding where they might come from. And what did I tell you yesterday? The best way to get around uh, in the... Oh, uh, my God. I wish I had a scooter, in all honesty, because my SUV, because Kenny won't let me call it a truck, was it was impossible to get through campus. I use uh, my scooter for all urban errands. Uh, I've gone. I over should have third. stopped at your house first, grabbed Tim, your scooter. Tim has not returned mine. It oh. should be coming back from winter storage any moment. But I use the scooter that I uh, have stored now at EcoFund. They did the maintenance on it, and I'll have that for all my summer errands. Everything that I do urban, I try to do on a scooter. If for no other reason than parking, it's not a problem. You can park it literally anywhere. Mm -hmm. And because you're seen to be a euphoria, nobody hassles you. They think, oh, look at this guy trying to save the earth. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move his bike off the sidewalk. Uh, they've got scooters at EcoFund Motorsports in Forest Lake and Burnsville. They have electric bikes, they have youth recreational equipment, they have motorcycles, they have uh, Kawasaki mule off-road vehicles. They have everything. They have helmets, apparel, great service department. Now go to EcoFun and Forest Lake where they have a, it's new. The parking lot is big and you can test drive the electric bike you choose and you'll leave there with the right fit. And that's terribly important. And if you buy a Yamaha electric bike, Yamaha is throwing in a second battery for free on their newest models. That's a two grand value. And Tim is uh, recognizing the March Madness sale for GLers through this month. You mentioned GL, you're going to get the March sale prices on anything you acquire at EcoFund Motorsports in Forest Lake just west of 35 on 97, and another store in Burnsville on the service road of life near County Road 42. Just really, really fun stores. EcoFunMotorsports.com. Go here. <laughs> this guy wears many hats, just not indoors. Joe Suchere. You ever have something really old and junky and you finally uh, get rid of it and you buy something new and you go, why didn't I do this years ago? That's how it is with these lawn treatments from ProfessionalTurf.com. You're going to ask yourself, why why didn't I do this 10 years ago when I first heard GL talking about it? Uh, they will change your lawn and your life. and. They really make you feel good about life, and it's just a click away, professionalturf.com. You'll have the best lawn on the block from early spring until late fall. All you got to do is water and mow. Uh, click that link, and here's what's going to happen. You're going to sign up, and you're going to get um, – they're going to come out and give you an estimate. This is a, a service tech, and the application will be designed for your lawn not the guy across the street or not the lawn they just did two miles away. And these plans are environmentally safe and guaranteed for superior results. A lush lawn, we're talking no crab grass, no dandelions, and no broadleaf weeds. It'll be beautiful. Just schedule a free in-person estimate, and your life will be turned around. And when you're on that website, do some surfing. Go deep in the tabs. Check out some of their landscape projects. Pretty cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, that uh, that... Website, professionalturf.com.
Here's John Height. Thank you, Joe. This uh, update brought to you by North American Banking Company. It looks like there will be no teacher strike in Minneapolis. One day after the Minneapolis Federation of Teachers announced a strike authorization vote would be held later this week. Well, shortly after 1230 this morning, leaders announced a tentative agreement had been reached between the two entities. Union members still have to vote on the deal. It's expected, though, to be approved. Wait, 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 uh-huh. wait, wait, well, wait. Hold on. I was told last November Uh that if Governor Walls and Flanagan were reelected, we would fully fund education. So, John, riddle me this. Why the strife? Is that fully fun? I don't don't know. I uh, I went to a high school baseball game yesterday. How'd we do? We won. Nice. And uh, I found myself chatting with a teacher, now retired, who had taught all three of the kids I used to have nice. at the same school. Ooh. And I realized, uh, he said, are you still working? I said, yeah. And uh, <laughs> Thanks for listening. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. It's very humbling, isn't it? Very humbling. It's kind I'm of a, a backhanded fan. slap, now it wasn't gets it? Worse. Oh, no. It gets oh, worse. He's a great guy. Great guy. The kids loved him. And... Uh, I realized about five seconds into the conversation that I had forgot my tooth at home. I have a, oh. I lost a tooth and I have this fake tooth that I wear while my I other ones, while my they were waiting for this to, home. And, and the guy looks at me and he probably thought, oh. You need some money? Boy, is this guy falling Can I get you a sandwich? Can I get you a tent? Yeah. Can I get you a tent? Wait, wait, wait. So wait a minute. And then he said, I, I got to go. Yeah. Hold on, hold yeah. on. John, I'm See sorry. The fair, he this said. might be a that's, short newscast. So that's hold why on. he asked, are you still working? Exactly. Oh. Can you be yes. yes. He glanced at the missing chopper, oh. and he went, uh, No, I, I, I don't even think he ball. might have said that. I think it came out voluntarily that I was still working, because I asked oh. him if he still God. was. And, and then I realized, oh, man, I, I, I didn't to, know whether to cover it. I didn't know whether to did explain you, it to him or just let it go. You, you should have said, do you, know where I, go. do you know where I can score some meth and maybe some Mountain Dew? <laughs> <laughs> you started with he he glanced at the missing chopper. He yeah. looked up at you and said, "You uh, you still working? You got health Everything insurance? Okay. Jeez, I just yeah. right you need a couple bucks." So you family, probably wondering how the your, kids are doing. You yeah, know? does your family know you're here? Yeah. <laughs> does uh, I got a question, Joe? Since you you have this false tooth and have for a while now, yeah. do you forget it often? Or yeah, no, this, no, why no. are you taking it out? You got to take it out to eat. And when I got home, oh, you you a little snack. I had a little snack. Oh. Okay, and sure, then I sure. thought, oh, I, I better run up to that ball game, and I forgot. You got forgot to plop her back plop, in. But didn't pop her in. You didn't and, feel and the then, breeze uh, coming in. Yeah, you know, and looking at him, and th- <laughs> and I was thinking, oh no, I wonder what he thinks. He oh, probably thinks the worst. Uh, I'm just getting a picture of dinner at your house now, Joe, with no tooth, just <laughs> shoveling More stuff potatoes, in. Mother. Whistling while he's eating mac and cheese, hey, is, yeah. bitching about his taxes, and Taylor Swift. And- hey, uh, who's going to win this game? <laughs> yes. In, uh, in other news, uh, more school news. Uh, an Oka Hennepin school district budget we've been talking about this week. Hold on, Chad. Hold on. Yeah. I All through my high school year, I had a fake front tooth that I sure. could take out. Uh-huh. I could fill my mouth with water. Close my teeth oh. and shoot water out of that gap. Oh, you know, try yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. Great yeah. tricks can be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fun. <laughs> Put a cigarette in there and oh, it'll yeah. just stick we'll just in leave there. Leave it there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I might yeah. as well give cool. the tease right now. Um, G oh. others, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the YouTube channel for today's content. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> There will be no budget stoppage in the Anoka Hennepin School District. A multi-hour work session of the board on Tuesday has seemingly ended that impasse regarding the district's budget. And district leaders said they reached a breakthrough as it worked through board members' concerns over spending on racial diversity and gender equity programming. Four members have now agreed to approve the 2024-25 budget during the work session. There are only six members, so it would pass then. The meeting allowed the issues shared by concerned board members to be separated from the budget budget approval process, according to district officials. They now say the proposed budget uh, is still being talked about, but will pass with four of the six members voting to move the process forward. Minnetonka-based United Health Group said hackers, uh, they did pay 
hackers a ransom this year to protect patient data. On February 21st, the Minnetonka-based health consultant said it had been the victim of a ransomware attack. A group of hackers claimed to have stolen at least six terabytes of data from the health insurer and change healthcare. The attack impacted prescription availability, paychecks for medical workers, discharges from hospitals, and billing and care authorization portals across the country. United Health did not say how much they paid the hackers. Although the hackers originally had asked for $22 million in exchange to get the data back. On Monday, United Health said the hackers appeared to have taken a substantial number of files containing what they called protected health information and personally identifiable information. However, United Health now says Change Healthcare has not seen any evidence that doctor's charts or full medical histories were taken amongst the data. Republican members of the Minnesota Senate, uh, we talked a little bit about this at the end of the show yesterday, have now filed an ethics complaint uh, against fellow Senator Nicole Mitchell. This comes one day after Mitchell was formally charged with first-degree burglary for allegedly breaking into her stepmother's Detroit Lakes home early Monday morning. Shortly after the complaint was filed yesterday, Senator Eric Lucero, a Republican from St. Michael, called for a motion to expedite the ethics process against Mitchell to determine what should happen with the most severe potential punishment being expulsion. He was opposed by Democratic Senator Nick Frentz from North Mankato, who said Mitchell deserved what he called due process. Due I, process, excuse me. I knew you were going to bring this up. I have a stat on that, oh. uh, according to the uh, Powerline blog. Oh. The arrest rate in the U.S. is 2,181.7 per 100,000 people each year, or 2.18%. The arrest rate for the Minnesota legislature Democrats is 3 per 104 in the last year. <laughs> or 2.89%. Elected <laughs> Minnesota legislative Democrats have a 32% higher arrest rate than the general population. But um boom boom. Hold on, I got that right here. Isn't that great? Yeah. Timing is everything, isn't it? Well, I would thought you were going with a different uh, avenue. Timing. Timing. It's timing. Morrison I. Morrison I. Mortensen. This has nothing Mortensen, to do with timing no. either. Mortensen no. Sandell. Sandell I. Thompson. <laughs> Thompson I. Thompson I. Mecklen. The other, um, this was submitted to us by a mole. I believe you received this as well. Sure. Um, I don't know if this person wants to be named, but his name is Daniel. Hey, I need well, to. What would you name him for? <laughs> Not the full name. Whoops. The full name. I need to go visit my mom in memory care today. Does anyone have a black turtleneck or set of lock picking tools that I can borrow? <laughs> See, that's where I you thought know, you initially were going. Okay. She obviously doesn't have a press team because she was doing good right, right up until up. she yeah. changed the story. <laughs> right. and, then, yeah. and then it's like, okay, we see what's going on. What here. would it take for her to have to surrender her seat? You're asking us? Well, I mean, her trial, she doesn't oh, even oh, plea until of, June. What kind of uh, offense? Yeah. I mean, what yeah. if she's found guilty of this uh, break-in right. in Detroit Lakes, it, does she have to lose her seat? Didn't the Democrats won't let her. No. The Democrats no. Too much just dropped time. everything, and they're rallying. Oh, yeah. You know they're meeting right now behind locked doors. And 90% of them don't know who she is. Right. right. Wait a minute. But she, was she, wearing, was, she was wearing They have black? to keep her. What? They got. They need her. Mm -hmm. You guys did see, and maybe I shouldn't bring this up on the show, that she posted a reply to our Twitter uh, thing on this, right? What Twitter thing? <laughs> we we posted we the show yesterday. Uh, Mayor has Wait new theory on the failed academy of oh, Nicole Mitchell, blah, 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 blah. I'm then you go down to the bottom, there's the reply from at Queen of Woodbury, Nicole Mitchell. I, oh, I, what'd she say? She said, uh, she put a picture of Scooby Doo, and it just says, Ruh Roh. Huh. Oh, okay. I, We're going to oh, Wait, are you sure that's her? I don't have any it's, idea. Okay, I'm, I was to call her the Queen of Woodbury. Hold, hold on, I'm, I'm looking at it. There's no way this is her. I'm going to look. No, no, that's a parody. I'm looking right now. It's yeah, a parody. It's, it's a parody account. This is not her. Never mind. Because yeah. Scooby Doo would never say it. John, this is why you don't bring up stuff from social media, okay? I've been trying to tell you that for years. <laughs> you really wish you'd take your job more seriously. You got seriously. it from Twitter. Yeah. I'm, 
I've been lecturing Reavers on this for years, and look what I just did. Yeah, Love you it. did it, John. You fell right into that. You I, dug I yourself did. a hole. <laughs> and you kept digging or and something. You got deeper. Uh, yeah. Uh, we had a lucky. Us. You're one of us now, John. Welcome. Apparently, yeah. A lucky lottery player uh, uh, won up here in my neck of the woods. You guys see this? Great. A three three point one million dollar winning ticket sold at the Cub Foods on Northdale Boulevard in Coon Rapids. All right, right. that's fair. Why shop. is this in the news? Think of all the three point one million. They can buy. Come on, BFD. Oh, geez. I'll take three point one. Well, no, if a guy won sixty billion in the lottery deal, uh, then it's news. Uh, some guy tripping so, through Cubs at the thing. What, yeah, are that, you some sort of aristocrat? So, if yes, I won three hundred dollars, I would quit my job and live high off the hog. See, <laughs> where I'd be dead in about six minutes. Three hundred bucks, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. The fella here can take one point four million in a one time payout. Or gal, I shouldn't say fella might be a gal. One point four million or thirty annual payments to get the three point one million. So there All you right, go. that's that's take fantastic. Pay Uncle Sam. Thank Joe, you. I'm puzzled just, as to why that's the story, but Joe just threw a lot of cold water on that. But well yeah. why don't we why don't we take a break to think about this and see what our friend Rookie has to say? Well, we want to be civil, don't we? We want to be civil to each other. <laughs> Yes. I, mean, I don't want to rip you. I right. don't want to rip you every day. No. I need to be nice to oh, you sometimes. Once in a while. Yes. And <laughs> I'll tell you what, talking about civility, Minnesota has 120 Masonic lodges throughout the state. Most people look at those old buildings as the place. People go once in a while for a good pancake breakfast or where their grandpa went to hang out with friends and learn secret handshakes. They'd be right about that. What people may not know is that the Masonic Lodges, that's where thousands of men make a commitment to develop their personal potential and work on becoming the best possible versions of themselves. Courteous, honorable, kind, humble, and charitable, and in a word, civil. In a world dominated by the decline of ethical and moral integrity, the Masons have embarked on a new program, Civility School. If you'd like to learn more about the Civility School... And they would love to have a Garage Logic opinion on that. You can certainly get in touch with them. They are all set to talk to you and give them a buzz. Let them know you want to talk about the Civility School or learn more about it. 952-948-6200. 952-948-6200. Or just go to their website, mnmasoniccharities.org, and learn more about the Civility School. Leroy, what time is it? Lib. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Gang, Joe Souchere. Gang, it doesn't look like we'll have an opener Friday, but when we do, it'll be brought to us by Precision Garage Door. Make sure your garage door and opener is in top working condition with Precision Garage Door book online. At Precision Door MN or call 612-263-6985 and see if Friday is the opener, although I, I'm not holding out hope. Do you have your doubts? John, I'm not holding out hope. In other news, hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters have been arrested at several universities. Demonstrations continue. We talked, of course, about uh, Columbia University. Well, they spread to other states from Massachusetts to Texas to California, where students set up encampments. Late Wednesday, last night, Los Angeles Police Department officials said 93 people were arrested at the University of Southern California on suspicion of trespassing. The USC arrests were made after the university had told protesters they needed needed to disperse. Did you gentlemen see the video from Florida State University? I did not. In Tallahassee, where they uh, were trying to discourage kids from protesting, where they just turned the sprinklers on. Oh. <laughs> you want to gather? Smart. Here you go. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> it was That's brilliant. fantastic. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> a, st- a state grand jury in Arizona yesterday indicted Trump aides, including Ruli Giuliani and Mark Meadows, as well as the so-called fake electors who backed then-President Trump in 2020 after an investigation into the alleged efforts to overturn Joe Biden's win in the election in that state. 
One month after the 2020 election, 11 Trump supporters convened at the Arizona GOP headquarters in Phoenix and signed a certificate claiming to be Arizona's 11 electors to the Electoral College, although Biden won the state by almost 11,000 votes. Uh, Trump is described as an indicted co-conspirator in the indictment, which includes charges of conspiracy, fraud, and forgery. A U.S. Secret Service agent with Vice President Kamala Harris's detail was removed from their assignment after engaging in a physical fight with other agents while on duty Monday. Oh, Maybe fun. she's driven them crazy. Mm. Yeah. The incident happened at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland while Harris was at the Naval Observatory but didn't delay her departure from the base. Anthony Guglielmi, chief of communications for the Secret Service, called the incident a medical manner, uh, matter adding the agency wouldn't be commenting any further. Uh, at approximately 9 in the morning, a U.S. Secret Service agent supported the vice president's departure, Guglielmi said, and began displaying behavior that their colleagues found distressing. The agent was removed from their assignment while medical personnel were summoned. The vice president was at the Naval Observatory when the incident happened, he said in a statement. The agent, who had been acting erratically, according to sources, began punching the special agent in charge after getting on top of him. The agent, who was handcuffed after the incident and treated by medical staff, had previously been a subject of concern by the staff, according to reports. So, yeah, when you first said medical, I thought, what, he has a broken nose? But this sounds like one of the meetings that Matthew and uh, Such have had uh, prior to uh, the podcast a few times where mm -hmm. they've One's been on top of the other, just pummeling away. It's yeah. come to that. It has. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imagine what we can do next. <laughs> Four more years. Pause. Four more Pause. years. Pause. Pause. New York's <laughs> highest court this morning overturned Harvey Weinstein's 2020 rape conviction, reversing a landmark ruling of the Me Too era in determining the trial judge improperly allowed women to testify about allegations against the ex-movie mogul that weren't part of the case. However, the 72-year-old Weinstein will remain imprisoned because he was convicted in Los Angeles of another rape in 2022. But the New York ruling reopens uh, the uh, chapter of Americans reckoning with sexual misconduct by powerful figures in an era that began in 2017 with all kinds of allegations against Weinstein. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office signaled its intention to retry him, and his accusers could again be forced to retell their stories on the witness stand. Yeah, the US, Kenny, I, I know exactly what you were going to say. No, it's the justice system that has me down. If they would have done it right the first time, we wouldn't be facing this. How many times have we seen guilty until proven guilty until they, you know, and you right. know ahead of time that he's going to be guilty whether he did it or not on any variety of crimes and topics. It's just we have no more justice system left in this country. It's every man for himself. What I'm saying is arm yourself heavily, bar the door. <laughs> Is that a uh, is that a show uh, uh, opinion? I think or? the clash said oh, when they come candy, for candy you, uh, yeah. how are you going to come <laughs> with a hand on what your hands on your head or on the trigger of a gun? Didn't mm -hmm. the clash say that? Yeah, yeah sure. That's the clash. Yeah. Pope uh, Pope Francis doing his first major U.S. interview with CBS News. He talked about the need for peace around the world and. Uh, uh, well, Joe, I'm sorry to say that he spoke out against climate change deniers calling them fools his first ever interview on american television well he the, ain't infallible when it comes to that the often progressive pontiff spoke with cbs news's nora o'donnell at the vatican this week to give his thoughts on violence in ukraine and gaza and other subjects however he made a pointed effort to express his displeasure with those who deny climate change when asked if he uh, when asked what he says to those who deny it by o'donnell he said there are people who are foolish and even foolish, if they show you the research, they don't believe it. Yeah. They don't understand the situation because of their interest, but they must know climate change does exist. Yes, it does, Pope. It always has. But did always he end will. up saying it like they do in the movies? Fools! Yeah. <laughs> look at the camera. Wow. That, was, that kind of scared me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
The U.S. economy continued growing in the first quarter, but at a slower pace as expected as high inflation continues to dash investors' hopes that the Federal Reserve will begin slashing interest rates in the coming months. Gross domestic product expanded at a 1.6% seasonally and inflation-adjusted annual rate for the first quarter, a pullback from last year's quicker pace that lagged behind the 2.4 projection that was uh, from economists polled by the Wall Street Journal. The widespread use of alcohol and e-cigarettes among adolescents is alarming, according to the World Health Organization's European branch, which recommended measures to limit access. Based on survey data from 280,000 young people aged 11, 13, and 15 in Europe, Central Asia, and Canada, the WHO said it showed a concerning picture of substance use among young people. The report found that 57% of 15-year-olds had drunk alcohol at least once. For girls, the figure was 59%. Less for boys, 56%. The WHO noted that overall drinking had decreased for boys while it had increased for Girls. I'm going to tell. I vaping. If I'm going uh, to smoke, I'm smoking. It, it, I'm going to tell the youth of America and the young GLers something that your parents, your grandparents, no adult will actually say to you. I'm the only person here on the face of the planet that will tell you the truth. Nothing will bring you more joy than smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Uh, he, his views do not represent those of the mayor's oh office God. above the boathouse on the East Shore of Smooth you've, Lake. If you're a teenager now, you've got a good 30, 40, 50 years before you have to quit smoking. Get in and get That's going. That's not true. You've, you've earned that That's self pleasure, true. right, Kenny? You've earned. Hey, it's been a tough teen wow. years. You got through them. This is going to make it a lot easier. Cigarettes will Why help. Why are you with, siding with him? Just for fun. They will help with everything, and they'll make a good situation even better. There's no you know time why? that a cigarette is. You know isn't why good. that is? Because you go outside and you ponder. You really, yeah. you you know really think is? it through. This is a view you don't often get in this country. Plus, That's true. You, look, That's true. you look cool smoking. It's a fact of life. Kids gather yeah. around, listen, Uncle Kenny. <laughs> yep. And if you play guitar, you can put it on the top of your headstock oh, while you play on that, that one. the coolest so cool. move ever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the thought that's always occurred to me is you know, I wonder who in the, in the world, the entire world, is the best fake smoker. Here. Oh, I can Why don't you tell them, Kenny, they might as well car. dump their ashtrays out on the street from the car. <laughs> Give us a good one. Hang on. <laughs> because you got to. You got to talk. I'm, I'm can you talk while exhaling well, smoke? Because what I have to say is so important yeah. that before I can right. exhale, the smoke is coming out of my mouth as I speak with you. Yeah. So you must listen to what I say. <laughs> and then it's sitting he on the side of my. One of. One of the highlights <laughs> of my life, I was about 19 years old, uh, and I was staying at a Super 8 in Bloomington. I went and bought a couple packs of Winston's, and I laid on my bed smoking, teaching myself how to blow smoke rings. And to this day, if I still smoked, I'd be able to blow a smoke ring. And I remember that day so well. That's not interesting. Memory <laughs> between the pages of my mind. Oh, what, 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 you should have smoked, the Matthew. Cup, the cup. Oh, got a cup. It. You got the cup. Yep. It. <laughs> I told Johnny, if you don't uh, finish that news story, we're, we're not going to get it done. If you're no. a European, you hold that cigarette like you're a Vulcan. You hold it between the yeah. middle and the third finger. And yeah. the best thing is when it's hanging. Yeah, hey, and John, you talk. You got that uh, Phillips screwdriver regular. That's, yeah. Bring it over here, kid. <laughs> yeah. That's another guitar move, too. You put it like this, and you hold a pick in this hand. And oh, you yeah. This. yeah. Another let me tell you move. something. You lay it on the edge of the workbench, and over time, your workbench becomes scarred yep. with the cigarettes that burn <laughs> yep. down. And when you There's... exhale, when you power exhale, you hate smoke so much. That you blow it out of the side of your mouth, yeah. so somebody else has to freaking worry about it. Right. I knew so it. Just let it go. You, know. you guys have come around. We are the only organization in the whole world that endorses smoking. Yeah. Pro. We're pro. What and the I hell? Have light them up. Yeah, I have asthma. Pro, light them up. You got them. Smoke them. I told them. <laughs> well, and, uh, and finally... I love what fake smoke. There is no better fake smoker than me. No, you, you are the best. Drink? How you many, are... Can you fake drink? No, fake smoking. So you got the no, but Joe, 
How about a cigarette in your hand holding the glass at the oh. same time? Yeah. And it's got to yeah. be the, yeah. the, the, the glass we like, that heavy bottle. Oh, it has to be a, 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 a tumbler. Holding, like it, like tumbler. This. holding yes. it like this. Yes. yes. And it's just. Uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah. I tell you, Edith. Those were the show. days. How come everything so good is so bad for you? Remember the days when you'd question. go to the doctor and the doctor would be having a cool as he examined you? Oh, my God. When my I mean, mom took the uh, kids yeah. to, to her kids to the doctor and she got frustrated with how long it took, she said, if I light a cigarette, he'll be in here. So she'd light up and start smoking. Sure enough, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your mom is awesome. <laughs> I love that woman. That's beautiful. Uh, it seems like just one more mile an hour here would have been worth it. A 20-year-old motorist in Florida recently caught going. 199 miles an hour. Oh, oh come on. Nice. Come on, pal. One more. Hit it. A Luis Lozano Figueroa entered a no-contest plea to the misdemeanor count during a court hearing. He was ordered to pay 900 bucks in fines and court fees. Uh, fees, excuse me, he'll have to complete a 12-hour aggressive driving class. He was arrested in January when cops spotted a red 2016 Chevrolet Camaro engaging in a 1 a.m. street race along the Florida Turnpike in Orange County. He was driving the vehicle. There were two passengers in it, posted speed limit 70 miles an hour. Uh, when police searched the vehicle, uh, they found an Insta360 X3 action camera with a mounting stick inside the car, which is registered to the 20-year-old's father. Uh, when they looked uh, at the video, 199 miles an hour. Thank God we had the make of the car or the story would have been yes. frustrating. Oh, I, yep. yeah, I don't think I'd have used it without that. No, you got to yep. have the make of the car. That weren't no six-cylinder Camaro. No. No, no, that was the real deal. That was the real deal, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. You bet. All right. T uh, say, I've been telling you about Renewal by Anderson uh, for the best windows in town, also patio doors. And, well, you know, all the stuff you need to look out of. Yeah, the you know, you got to look out of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's in here. It's right here. Not only patio doors, but entry doors. I want to see through it, too. Renewal by Anderson. They're a J.D. Power Award winner. The most five-star reviews in the greater Twin Cities area among leading full-service window replacement companies. Those, the proof of those wonderful claims are on their website. Uh, the new Acclaim window engineered, manufactured, as all Anderson products are right here in Minnesota. They're the best, and they can prove it. So if you're in the market for windows, check out Renewal's Acclaim replacement windows. The energy, energy engineering yep. and innovation is present in every component. So look, windows, patio doors, entry doors. Renewal by Anderson has the best products and the best service. Learn more at RenewalByAnderson.com backslash Garage Logic or call Renewal by Anderson at 651 705 6931. Funny number. What's phone over? Uh, I don't know if you know this, but he's the Fender Bender Mender, and he is on the phone with us right now because Positive Thursday at Garage Logic is always brought to us by Schoonover Body Works and Auto Care. They're in Shoreview, 1060 County Road E. Pretty much anything you need related to that auto, that daily driver or that fancy hot rod you only break out on the weekends, that three quarter ton pickup, it can all be had right there at Schoonover. So, I mean, come on. Hi, Mike. Hello, Kenny. Good to be with you today. How did it go last weekend? You had a Play for Patrick event on Saturday. How'd you do there? We did. We uh, we went down to Northfield, and we had um, we had a really good showing of volunteers from both uh, our male friends from Rochester showed up. We had a really good uh, showing from male, and we had all of our Minneapolis-St. Paul medical professionals show up. So it was a good... Uh, not really a halfway point, but a good spot that accommodated both. So we had really good volunteers there. And then um, we had 212 kids uh, get their heart screened, which we haven't had that kind, those kinds of numbers uh, in like seven or eight years. So good, um, it good. was really a good day. Good. Um, uh, you sent me the numbers some time ago, and I just looked them up. I have them here. Uh, you found 164 kids that were normal. So they were those kids were mad at their parents for dragging them out there on a Saturday, weren't they? <laughs> no, no, kid. no, no, no. That's now they now they got information to know that they got a benchmark there because 
because uh, you know even though they're they're normal, their st- their body's still developing, and you can you know it's recommended that kids get their heart screened every couple of years because your body changes, and especially with with uh, athletes who work really hard and train really hard, uh, changes can take place in um, you know in the heart. Uh, over time. So it's good that we, you know, check them out every couple of years. So it's good. (laughs) You know, normal is good. I mean, they're all good because now they all have a baseline. I think everybody should have their heart checked from teenage years all the way up until retirement. It's just, it's something that I think is very important. Uh, You found 21 elevated blood pressure, 13 normal with minor variants. What, what does that mean? So that is a um, that would be um, that would be maybe a youngster that has uh, maybe, um, you know, say, for instance, uh, we we have a hole in our heart when we're born and then eventually it closes up. Uh, Sometimes those holes don't close up. They don't uh, they don't close like they're supposed to. Uh, But they might be, you know, they still may not be fully developed. Uh, mature, their, their body is still, you know, changing and all that kind of stuff. So, um, or they might just be borderline on on some certain electrical condition or whatever. Um, you know, what's amazing is that these kids, they're in such good shape uh, that their their heart rates are so low, and yeah. sometimes that yeah. too is a uh, is a you know an indicator that there might be a heart condition, but it just means that they're in really good shape. Great. And 11 abnormal, which means they uh, need follow-up. Yep, yep. So we will, uh, we, we, we strongly encourage that they go see their family doc and, and uh, just get the checkup so that they can get the referral to go see a, a cardiologist and uh, get that, those things evaluated. When is the next event? It's going to be in, um, uh, at East Ridge High School over there in Woodbury. Um, a lot of people uh, get confused of East Ridge and East View. Uh, East View is in Apple Valley. We're not going to be there until November, but East Ridge is in Woodbury, and that'll be on uh, May 18th. And uh, we are going to honor a young man by the name of Teddy Dowdle, who passed away a couple of years ago from sudden cardiac arrest, and he was a uh, East Ridge grad from uh, 2018. Oh. That's right around the corner. That's coming up really quick. And if you need information, playforpatrick.org has all the information you need, whether you want to register or your kid or your grandkid, or uh, maybe you can volunteer. Um, They can always use your help. Um, So playforpatrick.org. Meanwhile, uh, Garage Logic's official body shop, you guys at Schoonover's, you've been doing it, doing it up since 1938. No wonder Schoonover Body Works and Auto Care is always rated as one of the Metro's top shops. Uh, The website, schoonoverbodyworks.com. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Kenny. Have a great day, guys. Get out of the phone. It's funny because it wasn't funny. (laughs) Wait, what theater? Don't get on the boat. (laughs) It's going to sink. Well, well, that's like those guys you watch at the movies go. that would say, don't go behind oh, that yeah. door. Right on that. You're right on that. Look right right behind you. Now. Victor Mason. He's right behind you. Close that basement door right now. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Eddie, you got a gun, Eddie. That's so awesome. They call oh, him Eddie. Oh, my God. Eddie. Not oh. by his stage name. They oh. call him Eddie. Yeah. Eddie, Victor Mason got a gun. <laughs> Get out of the house. <laughs> so cool. Get back to that house you stole early in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and all the whites are going, Will you please be yes. quiet? I'm trying to hear the dialogue. I'm trying to watch the movie. Victor Maitland. <laughs> Victor Maitland got a gun. <laughs> you cannot stop it. Oh, we we'll just make a move. Joe Suchere. How you doing? Renewal by Anderson brings you only because they come all the way from the Titanic, Apache yep. Junction, Arizona, from the traveling linemen. It was on this day. Joe, today is April 25th. In 1892, Maud Hart Lovelace was born in Mankato. She was remembered as the author of the Betsy Tacey books. A series of stories for young readers set in early 20th century Mankato. Hmm. In 1979, the Mankato Friends of the Library Association 
established the Maud Hart Lovelace Book Award for children's books. Nice. On this day, 425, in 1924, a race to break the world record for the longest distance traveled in a hot air balloon ended in Rochester as the winner, W.T. Van Orman, landed the Goodyear 3 just under the world record distance, 1,179.9 miles. The race began in San Antonio, Texas, and the three top finishers would soon represent the U.S. at the international competition in Brussels, Belgium. Hmm. And finally, on this day, April 25th, in 2006, the Guthrie Theater opened its new building to the public. Hmm. And that's that what happened ago? on this day. Holy Thank moly. Thank you very much. I'm going to yeah, never what mind. Do you get, tell you tomorrow. What do you get when you cross the Atlantic Ocean with the Titanic? About halfway. Was it? It was far more than halfway. Yeah. So the joke didn't work. Uh, uh, what do you get when you cross the Atlantic Ocean Kenny with the Scott. Titanic? Kenny about Olsen. more than halfway. About four fifths of the way. Yeah. Ken, Kenny Olson has <laughs> officially left the conversation. Kenny, I don't blame him. Kenny, let's go out and have a smoke. Hey, have you uh, decided whether or not you want to yes. subscribe to the Garage Logic YouTube channel? Well, you should. You got your money's worth today. Because right there, you are getting <laughs> daily content. And don't forget, the Garage Logic Target Field Takeover is Thursday, May 9th. Yes, it's a day game, but you should sign up right now for the Garage Logic Town Council and also claim those free tickets. Yeah. They're free. Free? For free, for free, for free. Everyone wants something for free. Uh, do it now at garagelogic.cha. Cha? It is time once again that we check in with our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic. And boy, now is the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do exactly what I did and pick up that phone and dial 952-925-5608. That number once again is 952-925-5608. You call that number, you get Josh. And he will always give you the straight talk. He will never give you the sugar-coated advice. And he is there for you. Once again again for that free yes i said the word free 48 minute financial consultation and he's on the line with us once again here in garage logic and boy josh there is no way to put a positive spin on this it's brutal right now it is brutal chris it is brutal it was almost like the twins the other night when we watched them play the white Sox. they started out strong and brutal pitching no clutch hitting and the it's rebound still, is there is what you're saying the bottom of the eight exactly all of a sudden where were you guys earlier the fans started pouring out of the stadium you know at the top of the eighth inning unbelievable and here it was the twins the twins came back to win the Timberwolves also downtown the other night. They came back to win. Could be very interesting basketball season. And maybe the Twins start picking things up. But we'll see with that. The market needs to pick some things up as we are definitely, I call it correction territory. In some cases, bear market territory. And in some cases, just pullback category as the market retreated today on higher than expected personal consumption expenditures index, lower GDP growth than expected, and also lower personal spending than expected. Added to that, earnings from last night with Meta, owner of Facebook, Instagram, Reels, and WhatsApp, they beat the numbers, but missed a little bit on their revenue guidance and horror upon horrors they said they were going to increase capital expenditures over the course of the next year up to 40 billion dollars on improving their generative 
AI. And analysts looked around, looked at each other and said, huh, are they going to be able to make money on generative AI? And they sold Meta off and sold Meta off significantly, driving the shares down 15%. That is some big, big numbers. After the sell-off in Meta, several analysts and talking heads said, oh, you should have known this was coming. Meta's stock price had gone parabolic over the course of the last year when Meta stopped spending and the CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, said he was going to concentrate on efficiency and cut back on the spending on the metaverse with the need for competing against Microsoft, Google, Apple, Amazon in the artificial intelligence space met us, had to step up their spending. They had announced that earlier this year, as did NVIDIA, the provider of high-speed chips that Meta, Microsoft, and other companies have been acquiring en masse to get the additional horsepower that that's needed to power up generative AI. We have talked about this over the course of the last year, and AI and the promise that AI has really pushed up a lot of technology, in particular, a few of the considered the MAG-7 names, that being Meta, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and NVIDIA had been added to that. For some reason, last night, the spending to improve Meta's generative AI product. Well, that must have fallen on deaf ears or people woke up to the fact that, hey, this is going to cost a lot of money. The promise of generating revenues and profits for that is, might be somewhere out, out a few years. So Meta is down. That was that led the Nasdaq down. And in after hours and even in market hours today, Google sold off. Microsoft was down significantly. Both Google and Microsoft do report their earnings tonight. They're going to have to, uh, I'll say, their earnings reports, their guidance, and what they say on artificial intelligence has got to be a lot more, I'm not going to say a lot more positive than than Meta, but it does have to be positive and show that the money that they have been spending on this is starting to bring some some returns. Other things with Google and Microsoft that are going to be looked at, how much their revenues are increasing from their cloud products. That is very interesting and do bear this, this in mind. The amount of storage capacity, they're up in the cloud, held at a, a data center, is going to be massive. And generative AI also, as we've talked before, uh, necessitates a lot of horsepower and energy. So those might be some places to look at. So data center companies or companies that feed into that are going to be important. And that could be if you're looking even for income. And I'm shifting gears here, I realize. If you're looking for income, some of the data center real estate investment trusts could be a place to, to be uh, as, that could, as they could uh, provide some growth plus some reasonable income. And I do believe that income could generate, uh, could be a lot higher than the current yield on, on a long-term treasury, which has moved up. Some of the economic figures came in, which drove down treasury prices. Treasury prices down, yields up. The long-term treasury index and again, I am not a bond investor. I don't recommend investing in bonds. Bonds are going to move based on where interest rates are, are going. Bear in mind, the Fed is going to be higher for longer. The likelihood of Fed cutting interest rates this year, I think, has been reduced significantly. Unless, of course, that GDP number turns negative for two quarters in a row. I don't really see that happening. And the Fed is still concerned where inflation is. And the PCE indicator, personal consumption expenditures indicator, is up. So that, again, is something to pay attention to. Other earnings reports, negative. IBM, they were down. They missed, the, missed on revenues. And they said they're looking to buy a company called HashiCorp. So they were down. 
down significantly. That added to the Dow's, we'll say the Dow's woes. Caterpillar, their revenues missed, uh, but EPS beat. Their stock was down a lot on that. Comcast. Well, they beat the numbers, but nobody liked their subscriber growth, so that's down. People are still moving to to streaming services, don't have to have their, what they offer. And then we've got ServiceNow, they beat, but people looked at them, they're spending some more money on AI, and that's something that people did not want. So it is going to be a little bit difficult in the market right now. We could see some buy the dip activity, but definitely be careful out there. And that's why we come to you twice a week for that straight talk and never sugar-coated advice, Mr. Money Tuck. You heard him, GLers. Thank you very much. Now's the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free 48-minute financial consultation by doing just what I did. Pick up that phone and dial 952-925-5608, where you always get street talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, once again, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Have a great rest of your day, a fantastic weekend, and we will talk to you again next week. Look forward to it. Thanks. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.